Finding a vulnerability in a website is not that easy. So many people ask me about the bug bounty roadmap. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the bug bounty roadmap. In this video, you will get a complete overview of bug bounty program, how to start, where to start, what to study, what are the tools that you have to use and what are the basic steps that you have to do and uh, how to start practicing it. All these stuffs we are going to cover in this video. So let's get started. Before jumping into this video, let me tell you about the prerequisite that you really need it to do the bug bounty program. It's not really a mandatory that you should come from a computer science background. If you really want to know how the computer works and you're really interested to learn about the computers, peripherals, networks and all the web application things, then you can also really start doing this. Step number one is computer fundamentals. You should really know about what is computer, what are the input devices, what are the output devices, what is the central processing unit, what is memory and what is data, how they represent the data, how computer uses the binary zeros and one, common units like bit bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes and what are the types of software a computer use, what are the types of operating system, what the internet is connected to this computer, all this stuff comes under the computer fundamentals. Not only bug bounty, if you are a computer science student or you are working in a software, then you should really know about all the stuff because these things are very basic and common that really helps you to understand what is computer and what is the thing that you are using. So these are the basic things that you should know. This is step number one. Step number two is computer net networking fundamentals. In this topic, you will know about the computer networks, how a computer is connected to the internet, how your Wi-Fi is connected to your network, how your local area network is working, how the wide area network is connected to your network, what is subnet, what is IP, what is LAN, what is WAN, what is MAN, what are the type of topologies that a computer network use. There are different type of topologies that a computer network use, what is a star, what is bus, what is ring. You may probably know about what is router and what is switch, but you should know about the real understanding of router, what the router will do, how it will be connected to your home network, how your local area network is creating on your home network, how what is public network, what is private network. So all these things will be covered inside this network area. So you should learn about what is router, what is switch, what is hub, what is access point and what is modem and what are the types of communication that you usually use, unicast or broadcast or multicast and what are the types of network protocols will be used. It can be a HTTP TCP, TCP, FTP, SMTP, DNS and there are more than 65,000 ports are available but you should have a knowledge of computer ports that are commonly used across the networks and you should learn about IP addresses also. We all know about IP addresses but, but you should know about how they create the IP address, what is IP address, what is IP version 4, what is IP version 6, what is public IP and what is private IP. Then you should also learn about the network models which is OSI model. On this OSI model you will learn about 7 layers of the computer computer networks, physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. You should have an understanding about how the computer security works, firewall, encryption, VPN, common networking terms like bandwidth, latency, MAC address, subnet, types of wireless networking is Wi-Fi, LAN, Bluetooth, cellular networks. These are all the areas that you should be aware of. Networking fundamentals are really important because everything is connected to internet. Then you should know about how your computer is connected to the internet. What is the port that allowing you to transfer your files from one place to another? What is the type of communication that your browser is doing? What is the type of security that your network is having? What are the type of communication that your router is doing? So networking fundamentals is really important. If you are successful with the previous two steps, then you can jump into the third step, which is operating system. Every devices will have an operating system to make it operate. Either it is connected to internet or not connected to internet, it will have an operating system. So you should know about how this operating system works. In cybersecurity, most of your work you will be doing with your command prompt or with your Linux terminal. So you should know about the basic system commands. You should know about files and directory management. What is ls, what is cd, what is pwd, how to make a directory, how to touch a file, how to remove a file, how to copy paste, how to move, how you view the file, how you edit the file, how do you use the nano, how do you use the editor, how they use the file permission and ownership. For chmod, chhon, ls and process management. You terminate a process, how do you kill the process and basics of networking like IP config, ping, netstat, ss, nmap, searching and finding, how do you find a file, how do you grep it, how do you locate it and user management, who am I, id, sudo, su, password and file transfer, system information, you name. These are the very important things that every person should know before jumping into cyber security. Make sure you learned all the steps before jumping into step 4. Let's move to the step number 4 is web application fundamentals. We all use web application mobile 
application every day. In this topic, we are not just going to use the web application, we are going to learn how the web application is actually working. In this topic, you are going to learn about what is web application, what are the components of web application like front end, back end, database, web server and what is API, application programming interfaces and what are the types of web application, static web application, dynamic web application, single page web application and multi page web application and fourth one is web application architect. You're learn about client server model, three tier architecture, modern web architecture and common web protocols like HTTP and HTTPS, DNS, SSL and TLS, REST and GraphQL. You're going to learn also about the security in web applications also. What is authentication? What is authorization? What are the common vulnerabilities? What are the tools they are using for the web development like front end tools, back end tools, database tool, testing and debugging tools and what are the version controls that are using to collaborate on the code and web application development like web hosting, what is CACD and what is CDN. Those, these are all the topics that help you to understand about the web application. So if you have learned all these stuffs and if you get an idea about how the web application works, then you can move forward to step number five. Step number five is programming knowledge. Studying a programming language is really hard as I know how it feels. But uh, if you really want to master in cyber security, you should really know about at least one programming language that really helps you to understand about how the concepts work, how the web application works. So you can find great vulnerabilities with the help of coding. If a person in cyber security doesn't know about any programming language, then he can find only 50% of the vulnerabilities. To find the remaining 50% of greater vulnerabilities, they really need coding knowledge. So make sure you are learning at least one programming language. Start with C that helps you to understand Java. Java helps you to understand Python. So at least any one. But in cyber security, Python will be most probably used everywhere. Start learning Python. You can learn Python in 90 days. Finding a vulnerability in a web application is really not that easy. But every web application will have a vulnerability. Based on your experience and practices, you can easily find it. So how can I do that? All you have to do is start with OWASP.org. OWASP is an open source web application security project. It's a global non-profit organization that focuses on improving the security of software. This non-profit organization will create a list of vulnerabilities that will be categorized based on the priority and severity of the vulnerability. Let's go to the OWASP Top 10 2021 edition. A1 is broken authentication, A2 is cryptographic failure, A3 is injection, A4 is insecure design, and A5 is security misconfiguration, A6 is vulnerable and outdated components, A7 is identification and authentication failures, A8 is software and data integrity failure, A9 is security logging and monitoring failure, A10 is server side request to forgery. The vulnerabilities that you're going to find in the web application that all comes under this category. They also have the category of OWASP resources. OWASP is providing OWASP ZAP, OWASP dependency check, OWASP security knowledge framework, OWASP as the ASVS application security verification standard. And what are the core concepts they are providing is secure coding, threat modeling, input validation, authentication and authorization and regular security audits. If you are a beginner, you have to familiarize with this OWASP top 10. Practice everything with OWASP SERP. If you are an intermediate, explore OWASP project like a juice shop, a vulnerable web application and practice in it. And if you are advanced, then learn OWASP, ASVS and implement secure development lifecycle. If you are in step number 6, then you are almost completed 60% of your work. Then let's move to the step number 7. Step number 7 is practicing. Practice is cyber security knowledge, then you can use most of the free and paid tools available in the market. Let's go with the free tools. First one is Try Acme. It has a free tire. It focuses only on the labs and ethical hacking and cyber security basics. Second one is Hack the Box, which has a free tire that's most on penetration testing and exploiting web web application vulnerable systems. Third one is OWASP Juice Shop, practicing mostly on the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. And fourth one is OneUp, you can download the virtual machine to practice your ethical hacking. And for the paid cyber security playground is Try Acme, Hack the Box VIP, Range Force, Penetration Testing Academy, Immersive Labs. These are the free and paid playgrounds that you can make use of it. If you start doing all this practice labs every day, you will get an understanding how the cyber security works. You will get more knowledge about the vulnerability, how the real hacking works, how they really hacked into the system, how, what is CVE, what is a vulnerability, you'll get to know all these things practically. So start doing all the stuffs. Moving on to the next step is learning. Everyone in cyber security field, they learn something new every day. They learn something new in the blogs. They go to the hacker one activity and they read the whole reports, how they found the vulnerability, what is the exploitation, what is the payload, how they exploited it, and what is the latest hacking news. Find a good blog, find a good read, and create a group, join a community, go for security meetup, go for hacking event, go play CTF along with your friends reading all the stuffs every day that helps you to keep you update 
so start doing it every day step number nine is never get jealous of anything if you are into cyber security field you may see that people posting so many vulnerabilities in linkedin and uh, private groups they'll share that they'll they'll just share i found a vulnerability they rewarded me like a three thousand or five thousand or ten thousand whatever it is the point is not about being jealous the point is whenever people see these kind of things they'll immediately jump into their bug bounty program so just because they found a vulnerability you cannot find it bug bounty is not a race so don't try to compete with somebody else in bug bounty you will find a vulnerability based on your knowledge the final step is never give up you are onboarded on a web application program sometimes you may find a vulnerability very easily within some five minutes sometimes you don't even find a vulnerability even for a year some web applications are not really vulnerable if the application is vulnerable then you can easily find it if the application is not then you cannot able to find it if you really want to dig harder into the web application then you should know about the core concepts and programming language how the web application works you have to go behind the code also so there are some places that you may lag so go back to the step again read something new but only one advice i want to give you on the step number 10 is never give up on anything ne keep yourself updated do the same thing again and again practice more that really helps you to success in your life hope this video will really help you to get your first bounty comment your thoughts below i'll see you guys in another video bye bye